So I'm in the Simpich Christmas Room today, which is in the very center of the uh, Simpich Heritage Center. And you know, years ago when this building was the doll workshop, I right now would be standing in the parking lot. My parents bought this building in 1978, and it was a smaller building then, but that was during the time that the dolls grew very quickly. It became the, the uh, finishing room for the dolls, and then when we opened the Simpit Showcase, it became part of the museum. I'm going to talk to you today about the Concertina Man. He was produced in 2004, and one of the last Simpich carolers to be produced. And he is actually a good illustration of that growth and then also the tension between artistic design and the artistic process and then trying to make a business with handmade figures. So again, back to 1978, my parents purchased this building. They had a staff of about seven people that worked in the building. And then they had some home workers that helped to make the dolls. Uh, they would, uh, would paint them or sew on their costumes or cast pieces in their home. The pieces would be brought to the workshop, they'd be put together and then sold from this headquarters. But uh, that was 1978. By the mid-80s, they had about 100 people working for them and that would include the, uh, the home workers and the people working in the building. And that, that um, ballooned to maybe 50, 60 people working in the building along with, with the home workers. Well, in 2004, uh, the uh, supervisor staff, which was the, the, the heads of the different departments that would work on the dolls, there was a, a, a casting supervisor, there was a painting supervisor, there was a finishing supervisor, a clothing supervisor. So this staff would work together and have meetings every week on how to go forward in producing the dolls. And uh, in 2004, uh, they were really entering into a time of struggle between how to continue to make everything by hand and have uh, a staff of people working in the United States to produce them and then have the quality be what they wanted it to be because it was getting very expensive to have a staff that would made everything by hand. Well, when the concertina man was designed by my dad, he did the head and designed the concertina and the hands. Uh, this piece went to the uh, group of supervisors to discuss how he could be produced. And I remember I would come in during that time, my family and I were touring with my marionette shows quite a bit, but I would come into the supervisor meetings quite a bit. And interestingly, there was a great debate uh, over whether the concertina man should have his hands out holding, holding the instrument or just in felt gloves like many of the carolers had. And a lot of the staff was opting and promoting having uh, his hands in the gloves, in the mittens, because then it, it, it cut down on the time it would take to, uh, to paint this very intricate hand that my dad designed that's holding or wearing one of those gloves where the fingers stick through. Um, so that, that's a whole nother step or several steps uh, in, the, in the creating, in the production process of putting him together. And then they wanted to, to keep the cost down so that people could afford to purchase the figure. So great debate. I would say that was the closest one that I remember of this almost uh, a major argument within the staff uh, to, to decide what to do about him. And uh, my dad, of course, held, for, held out to have him hold, uh, holding the concertina with his gloved hands where his fingers were showing. They were, they were really rooting for the, uh, the gloves in the clothing department, maybe even the painting department because of the time it would have taken to do that. Well, my dad had the final say and they decided to, um, he decided that they would have the, the gloved hands and then the paint, they would be painted and then carefully attached to the, uh, the arms. And, but that was 2004, that was one year before my parents announced their retirement. And uh, that they were really forced to do that during that time because it was a time where, again, the, the handmade process of creating a product that was sold in the United States was getting very expensive. Materials were expensive, but uh, the, the cost of labor 
is what actually finally made my parents decide that they needed to, uh, to stop producing the Simpich dolls. And that was one year after uh, this, this character was introduced. So the demand for him, until my parents closed their doors in 2007, was very great. And the staff all stayed there with my parents to make the dolls, and they, they produced as many as they could. But he was one of the final additions to the carolers and is a very, very uh, sought after piece um, because they just weren't able to pr produce very many. Um, but again, I, when I look at him, I always think about that, those meetings where, where the staff got together and really argued out, really almost fought out, how we were going to balance artistic um, excellence with production excellence to actually get the doll made in, a, in, amount, in an amount of time and at a cost that people could afford. So I always, look at the, I always think about that when I look at him. And here in the uh, Christmas room, in the Heritage Center. Actually, this piece does not belong here permanently. We have him over here on the tree. And uh, actually, this Christmas tree, we've kind of highlighted a lot of the extra or additional pieces that my parents made for the Caroler set. And there he is. And again, I don't know exactly how many were produced, uh, but not very many because uh, just a year after um, he went into production. My parents decided that the Simpich dolls were going to have to uh, stop being made. And that was a big day. I remember that day. So he's a special piece.